Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video three, and today we're talking about the Analog Engine, one of my personal favorites. So if we load up a default patch over here on the File menu on the top left and go to New Preset, the first engine is going to be Wavetable by default. So let's click Wavetable and go to the left where it says Analog. So first things first, what I'd like to talk about for any synth really is the sound generation in the beginning. So we have Oscillator 1, Oscillator 2, and Oscillator 3. So if you hone in just for a moment on this first oscillator, what we're going to see here is at the, at the middle here, we're going to see all the different waveforms that it comes with. So we can choose a sine wave. If we want to have a sine wave, we have a triangle wave, we have a saw wave, and we have a saw wave of opposite polarity, and then we have a square wave. Interesting to note, we have this width knob as well. So this is only going to be activated with a square wave, which we can see here and change it to a pulse wave or with a triangle wave and kind of change the width or the shape of this waveform here. Any other ones, this is going to be grayed out right there. Next up, we have the volume of this specific oscillator. There's gonna be a lot of different volume controls. So this one right here is going to be for this first oscillator only. Next over here, we have the course. So this is quite a big range, 36 semitones up and then 36 semitones down. So quite a healthy range just within this oscillator itself. Next up, we have oscillator two, which is basically the same things, small little differences here. So if we turn this volume down all the way and we turn this volume of number two up and we have a saw wave here, we have a button here called key. So when this is on and we play different notes, it's keeping the pitch of whatever note that we press so we can hear the pitch change. But we turn this off and no matter what key we press, going to be the same pitch and we would control this pitch through this course knob so you may be asking yourself why would we have this option and it's very useful if you're creating type of percussive sounds that you don't really want to change the pitch for it so if i was making a kick drum for example i would turn this off and then find the right frequency to dial in and then every time i hit a note it would still be consistent i, would, I wouldn't want it changing a pitch for for that option Number three is basically basically going to be a copy of number two. So yeah, there's not really too much difference between two and three. What we do notice here between one, two, and three is this fine tuning here. So we have semitones down one and then semitone up one. Then we have this little menu here. So we have relative and offset. So for example, let's say I have a saw wave here. Let's put this back on full and you can double click to go to the default values if you didn't know that. So we have two saw waves here, equal volume, and let's turn this drift knob down. We'll talk about that in just a little bit, and we'll hit a note. So really what's happening is just an increasing volume because there's no pitch change. There is no phase change. It's just going to increase the volume. But when we change this fine tune, we're detuning this second oscillator by whatever selection we have here. So minus one semitone or plus one semitone. And it's going to be relative because if we have a very, very high note and we, and we detune it by one semitone down, that's going to be a different value in Hertz than if it was going to be from a very low note next to another low note. So if that doesn't make sense, if we go to relative and we change this to offset right now, we have Hertz values, 3.5 minus and 3.5 plus. So, 3.5 here is not going to change. It's always going to be specifically 3.5 hertz. It's going to be a hertz value. But if it's going to be in relative, it's going to be a semitone. So like I said, there's going to be a lot more hertz actually between higher notes in semitones than there are going to be in lower notes. So that's a kind of differentiation of that. So we can kind of see this here. So if we play a higher note... We kind of hear a little difference, but it's not too strong if it's a lower note. We almost get a little bit stronger effect because those 3.5 hertz, technically seven altogether, is going to carry much more weight on the lower end because there's going to be less, there's going to be bigger spaces. If that, Hopefully that makes somewhat sense here. So moving on from the oscillators here, let's put this back to normal at relative and double click that there. So we have the master tune here. So this is going to be the course tune for the entire engine. So if you have oscillator one, two, and three going at different pitches and different fine tunings and all that, and you want to change the pitch overall, this is going to be the course knob that you want to use. And this has plus six, 60 semitones up and, and minus 60 semitones down. So quite a range. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> anyway, next we're going to have this little 
piano thing. It's kind of hard to see, but this is going to be pitch quantization. So once we turn this quantization on, we can hit this little, I think it's a pencil, I'm not exactly sure. And anytime we modulate this course pitch, it's going to lock and lock the pitches to whatever we have selected here. So for example, if we have an LFO and we want to modulate this course pitch, so let's use LFO one, for example, let's give it a healthy, healthy modulation amount. So without this on, let's turn this off here. So we can hear it kind of going back and forth. So we turn this on here and then we select this little knob here. And let's say like, let's do a couple of notes like that, for example. So it's basically just going to snap to these notes and the range is going to be determined by how big or how wide this LFO is here. So turning this off, I actually misspoke earlier. This knob here is going to be kind of a similar here with this key pressed here. So if we remove this modulation here, let's take this off. We're going to dive into modulation in a later video. But anyway, if we turn this off here and turn this down, I'm hitting all these different notes as we see here on the keyboard, but it's the same pitch. So if I turn this on, it's going to follow the notes. And this is more so a global section of different kind of things here. So always keep that in mind. Next up, we have a global fine tune, which is up one semitone and down one semitone, similar to what we have here, but more so on a global engine global, I should say. Next up is going to be the drift knob. So this one is actually very interesting. So default, it comes 0 0.010. Now, if we just have one saw wave, we're not really going to notice anything because it's going to be changing the pitch slightly in different variations and the phase. But if there's just one saw wave, it's kind of difficult to hear what's happening. It's only when we introduce the second one that we're going to hear a lot of variations as we can see in the spectrogram right here. So if we turn this off, all these notes are going to sound the exact same. But if we add just a little bit of drift here at the default 0.010, we have quite a lot of variation here. So this is kind of emulating the differences and the unpredictability of analog type of sounds where you couldn't necessarily keep the oscillators on pitch or in phase. So this is kind of recreating that and it's a very clever way because it sounds very good, especially once we have the unison on. So for example, we have a little bit of drift here and then we have our voices all the way up at eight and then the default tune is fine for now, but listen to the difference. Whereas if we had this off here, still a good sound, but it doesn't have that, whatever you want to call it, this drift, I guess is their perfect name for that. Very cool button. Very awesome. I really like how that's there. It definitely brings the analog engine to life. So moving on here to the unison section, this one has a little bit more than meets the eye. So let's turn the second oscillator off here and let's just deal with one oscillator here on a saw wave. So with this unison, we can toggle this on and off with this power button here. And by default, it comes on a classic mode and voices you can kind of toggle between one and eight. You can go in between, but you have a maximum of eight voices and then the stereo is going to spread these voices out through the stereo field. So pretty self-explanatory. And this detune is going to detune these, uh, these voices to make it sound a little bit more why don't you take a listen? Here's zero detune. So once we get to 100%, it kind of sounds a little bit nasty here. But at the default at 3%, it sounds pretty cool. So it's basically a, a standard unison module. But if we select this classic and we go to chord, this is very interesting because now we have a chord here. So we have octave here. So we hit one note we can see that these unison voices are going to be played at octaves from whatever key that we press. Very cool, right? Now we can go up and we have a fifth. So up seven semitones, which is very common to do. And then we have minor, minor seven, minor nine, and then so on major, major nine, seven, six, nine, sustain four, two. So there's quite a lot of different choices here.
but keep in mind so for octave and for the fifth you really only need two different notes so like for the fifth you're going to need the fundamental and then semi sem, seven semitones up so you really only need two voices for that right but if you're doing a major chord or a minor chord you're going to need at least three so you don't want your voices to be at two because that wouldn't necessarily make sense so kind of think whatever chord you're doing make sure you have enough voices to actually do that so moving on from there hopefully that makes oh no no we have one last thing here the super so this is the unison is emulating the JP Super Saw, so let's take a listen at that. Definitely pretty cool sound. I think I'm more partial to the classic that they have here, but definitely cool that they added that in there. So moving away from the unison, this section over here we should talk about. So we have an output section here. Now we have a filter mix and we have this slider. So by default, it comes all the way to the left on F1, which is going to be this filter one here. So this engine, as we see this knob here, is going to be going only to filter number one. Now, if we want to send it only to filter number two, we would drag this all the way to the right, and we can see this is 100% filter number two. But we can also send them 50-50, so 50% in filter one, 50% in filter number two, or any kind of combination between the two. So that's going to become creative later on once you want to have a little bit or more so going into filter two, but some going into filter one, and that's kind of just creative decisions for you to make. Next up, we have the output volume here. Now, this is going to be for the entire engine. So let's say you have a mix of oscillator 1, 2, and 3 at a perfect value. You really like it, but this engine overall is a little too loud. You, you'd want to reach for this knob here, this volume next to the output section here. So by default, it comes at 0, but you have an additional 12 dB of gain that you can add if you would like to do so. Moving on from there, we have a noise oscillator. So technically, we really have four oscillators in this engine. We have a noise oscillator. Now the difference between this one, so let's turn down this first volume here so we have no sound coming out here if we play these notes so we can see. Now if we increase this volume of this noise, we can hear our white noise. Now we also have a choice of red noise or blue noise. So with white noise, it's going to be basically an even spectrum. As we go to the red, listen what happens. It's going to be cutting a lot of the high frequencies out, giving us more of a lower end kind of tone as we bring this up to blue it's going to cut the low end and kind of give us more of a hiss and you can mix these in any kind of way that you would like so it's not necessarily just a noise it's kind of a few different choices of red white and blue with a little bit of variation in between that as well now for going on from here is going to be the modulator section and this is going to be more so dived into a later video but just so you have a kind of a comprehension here, this modulator, we can go for the modulator here, which is this oscillator three, which is this guy, or we can go to the engine two, and which is cross modulation, which we will spend some more time in depth dealing with that. So for example, if you wanted to do a little bit of FM synthesis, we can select this oscillator one as a sine wave. Let's turn this up so we can actually hear it. And then if we follow this line here from this modulator, it goes over to the left, it goes up, and then to this knob right here. Now we can see this FM at the top is selected and this one at the bottom is selected. So as we turn this, both operator one or oscillator one and two are going to be FM'd by number three. If we just want to use one, we can turn this off. And this is still going to be regular. So if we have this at a saw wave down here, let's drop this at, at an octave here, kind of a typical FM sound. And we have a sound here. We have our noise still up, so turn that off. Let's turn our unison off. So we just have a sine wave right here. Let's turn this up a little bit here. And as we introduce FM, we can see that op or oscillator number three is going to be FMing operator oscillator number one. And yes, this is automatable. If you ever see this plus, it's always available for automation or modulation. And a very cool thing with pigments as well is once we move this modulation, we can kind of see a very cool representation of what this frequency modulation is actually doing to this sine wave. So something very cool that they added in there. I thought it was kind of pretty sweet. And we can choose different waveforms to, to frequency modulate this first operator. So a saw wave and a triangle wave and a sine wave are going to look slightly different than all of these as well. And we can listen to the different sounds. Let's turn the unison off for now. Wow. 
as well as the pitch. And if you want to do operator number one and two, select the second FM and there you go. Now that's pretty much the analog engine in a nutshell. It's a very cool one. It's pretty simplistic, straight to the point, but it sounds very, very, very good. So hopefully you learned something. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the wavetable. So this next engine over here and how all this works with all these different sections here of modulation and so on and so forth. So like I said, hopefully you learned something. If you like the video, please press like on the video and leave a comment and we'll talk about the synth and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.